The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things you need on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, this week we're going to look at some one-wire devices because I realized that with this i 2 to one-wire converter that I'm just working on right now, which will be in stock at DigiKey very soon, uh, people might also be interested in um, connecting one-wire devices, and they may not realize the plethora of i 2 devices that are available. It's more than just temperature sensors. Although we should look at the temperature sensors as well. Um, so first, let's go to the over. Sorry, the computer. We're going to talk about one wire. Um, in case you don't know, so most people who do electrical engineering or firmware programming, you learn about UART serial data goes back and forth one TX line, one RX line. So it's like choo choo, and then back back, like only one direction, one way street. Sorry two one-way streets next to each other, um, nice and safe. And then there's I squared C, which uses two wires, one clock and one data, and it's bi-directional, but every device has to have a unique address. Um, so you can have multiple devices, but all with unique addresses. There's SPI, which uses four wires, um, but you need one pin unique to each one. The chip select has to be unique and they can share the other three. So every, every device, you know, you add one pin that you need. And then there's one wire. One wire is like kind of like the engineer's dream, right? Because you're like, what if I have the best of all worlds? I don't, I want to add infinite devices. I don't want addresses. Um, I don't want, um, you know, address collision. And I only want to use one wire. It's where they're called one wire. I will say when I first learned about one wire before I learned electronics and I realized that there's two wires, I felt like, this is a lie, but actually I understand. Ground is not considered a data wire. It's considered like current return. So, um, and the reason I, I remember this, I remember seeing a Java ring. So this is um, a memory device and you can see there's like this ring here. It, it looks a lot like a battery. It's probably constructed the same kind of way. The data line is on the center and then the outer line is the ground. And when you would plug this into a reader, or here's another better look at the um, the inner, the S or the outer ground ring in the center data line. You could plug this into something as a unique identifier. This is before like RFID keys became very popular. So these were used for locks. They're also used um, in MagSafe. They're used in, uh, you know, you see the little LED on the power supply. I think that's actually driven by a DS2406, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, also used sometimes with batteries as like a ROM identifier. Um, but what's really nice is like, it, like you said, it uses one wire, optional power, doesn't hurt, but isn't required, and one ground. So if you are, you, if you do have a connector that's, you want to have as few pins as possible, like MagSafe, um, you know, where a second wire would you know, you need another mag, you know, you need another like magnetic thing or a little like pogo pin and they're just the, the cost expense is much higher. You can skip uh, I squared C and go to, um, and use one wire instead. So it's not used, you know, all the time, but uh, it is still used, even though it's an older, I think in the 90s is when it was, was designed. Anyways, um, the thing it's, you know, kind of most famous for is again, uh, the DS18B20. We use it, uh, we use the DS18B20 a lot. Originally by Dallas, then Maxim, and now analog devices. Uh, this is a um, they're pretty good temperature sensors. You know, I think like 100% accurate. Um, one thing about one wire is it's a little, especially if you're um, having it, the device power from the data line, because what it does is the pull up on the data line gives the um, a thing at the end just enough power. There's like an internal capacitor that it charges it up and then it does the, um, data transmission and then uses the data line to send the data back. So you do need a pull-up resistor. Um, they have a unique ID. Yeah, they're not too bad, plus or minus half a degree C. Good for many uses. Um, and one wire is designed for very long distances. You can go many, many meters, which I squared C is not designed for, and neither is SPI or UR. You, you can do RS-485. The one wire is specifically designed for going like you know, if you're like, oh, I have, you know, a 10 meter long wire, one wire is like, yeah, that's actually what it's designed for, for, for distant measurements. So it has a very unique uh, use case. And um, we're using the, um, the board I was just showing off is the DS2406. 
2484 which is a, you know a fairly low cost you know about one dollar in quantity uh i squared c peripheral that will then let you control one wire devices and if you look at like the one wire um instruction set it's very simple it's like you can search for devices you can read a byte and write a byte and then like like do a search procedure like it's very simple um you send a command and you get a response and so um you know it's great for yeah i don't know people who design their own but as long as if, if you happen to be using something that has a one wire interface available it's they're they're easy to program much much simpler than i squared c or spi because they again they don't have that much power um and they tend not to be too complicated so i think yeah so the other um board that we have that you know if you're interested in one wire that's interesting is this is the this is a two pin um expander so you can use this to uh control like a red and green led or if you want to have an input switch so two gpio input or output controlled again over one wire so you know very simple and again for for far distances uh could be handy so let's let's take a look at what's available so um even though it's spelled like five thousand ways technically the way you type it out is one dash wire one group that is very popular for one wire is eprom again for like batteries or um identification of devices like authentication for the i buttons um active in stock you know like this is adorable it's like three pins and it's you know it's only like you know 100 bytes or so but maybe you don't need more than 100 bytes of uh eprom data um comes in chip scale as well uh comes in a um to 92 for easy you know soldering onto wires um a couple you know there's a couple different uh sizes available so you have to as little as like you know like i said like 32 bytes to 64 kilobytes which is like a lot but you know maybe somebody needs that much of a big chip but um you know addressable over one wire so that's one possible use case another is the io expanders which i just showed the ds uh 2413 um there's also an eight pin version like 16 syc so i guess you know many gpio if you need to drive a lot of leds or maybe interface with something again remotely um io expander let's see what's 2413 let me see what catalog I will say because one wire is weird, it sometimes shows up in other um, areas. This is like considered a, a you know a, a specialized addressable switch, dual channel switch. And then let's go back. So EPROMS is like primary. Um, IO expanders looks like maybe digital little mini digital potentiometer. Let's see if they're normally stocking. Looks like they're out of stock. Doesn't I mean it wasn't very popular. So the disc you can probably get it on the secondary market. Um, specialized ICs. That was the um, oh yeah they have like authenticators and stuff. The DS eighteen E thirty. So if you can do like SHA authentication um, for crypto and let's see sensor interfaces. This is, I think, where, let's see. No, these are chips that use, although this is a thermistor. It's kind of interesting. So four channel thermistor temperature. I just guess it's one wire. Yeah. It looks like it's a you know it uses one wire and it can read up to four thermistors so you know four temperature measurements uh using thermistors specifically so definitely be used for like a battery pack or something and then the most popular like i said is the temperature sensors so um let's go to temperature sensors and for these let's look only because there's a lot that they don't make anymore let's look for active in stock and then let's sort by quantity so we can see the most popular 
So one thing that I thought was interesting is um, there are the, the DS18B20, but they actually look like they're phasing it out a little bit. Like you can still get it, but it's like an ancient chip. So not too surprisingly, um, they've probably redesigned the chip multiple times. And so the latest version looks to be the DS1825U, which probably is like, you know, back compatible. Um, it still has the 64-bit uh, ID, um, can be powered from the data line. Yeah, it converts 24 bits and 750 millimeters. That's exactly what the DS18B20, probably just like a slight update to the design. Of, you know, compatible with the 1822. Um, that doesn't seem like they make the TO92 as much anymore. I think they're, those fell out of favor a bit, uh, probably because people just pick and place them on. But they do have um, this Econo 1822, which is like, Probably, yeah, software compatible with DS18B20, more modern, you know, fairly inexpensive. So I think if you're, if you want like the closest thing to like, oh, I have a DS18B22 uh, and let's say you want it to be through holes, so let's look at only um, TO92 package because most people want it to plug into a breadboard. You have a couple options. This one is probably compatible. Let's see ones that are like in stock and not marketplace. Yeah, it looks like too bad. Okay, so it looks like this one or this one is available in bulk. So you don't even have to get it cut. The DS18 S20. I think this one's good though. For like, you know, two bucks a piece basically, you know, as long as you get more than like 10. Um, the max 31 820 so this is my pick if you're gonna like start experimenting with one wire and temperature sensing pick this up from digikey that's a great search Wait.